So another quick video based on a question on the Facebook group uh, about how you can have Virtual DJ talk to uh, my DMX 3.0 for controlling lights. Well, you can't do a lot, but you can do a little bit. Uh, at least that's what I've found. So that's what I'm going to try to show in this video. So this is just uh, Virtual DJ 2020 and I have a loaded track and we'll get back to that software in a minute. But then if I go into my DMX 3.0 over here, you can see that I have, uh, first of all, gone into settings, preferences in here. And I have told it on the MIDI. that I want a Launchpad Mini uh, to be a MIDI input and I want a Launchpad MIDI to be MIDI output. And, maybe even more importantly, I want some co something called Loopy Internal MIDI to be to handle the MIDI clock. Okay, so far so good. So that's settings. So what am I talking about here? Well. And I have a Launchpad Mini down here. And I have a box over here from my DMX. And I have a single light over here, my demo light right now. But then I have also installed something called Loop B1 from this homepage. Just search for it. It's a free virtual MIDI driver. And that's actually what's going to tie Virtual DJ and my DMX together to send the MIDI clock. So what's more do you need to do? Well, inside my DMX, I have changed my BPM over here to work on MIDI. So if it can, it'll try to read uh, the BPM from the MIDI clock, which is supposed to be loop B. We'll get back to that in a second. And then I have added the light and the patches. I have created two scenes over here, scene one and scene two, now the light starts, and scene one has two steps, turn the light all uh, the way up on red, that's down here, so that's red and full on, so turn it all the way on, and in step two, it turns it off again, and, it, and it's actually set to, to do it within one second. That's fine for now. And it's exactly the same with scene three. Only different is that if I go to the first step here, it just turns it all the way green instead. So it's green over here. So now I have a, a scene for going back and forth every second between nothing and red and nothing and green. So what's the next step? Well, I'm going to right click this thing and I tell it, well, the shortcut here is supposed to be a MIDI mapping. And then I press the button down here that I wanted to use. And it'll actually figure it all out. What's up, uh, what's uh, click and what's release and all that stuff. And that just works. So MIDI in, MIDI out. That's the first button. Okay. And exactly the same for the second one. Shortcuts, edit MIDI mapping. Pressing the second button down here. Okay. So now I can turn my scenes on and off. So the first button will be scene one. And you can say, see that it turns it full red and off every one second. And if I turn that off, press the second one. It turns the light green, all the way green, and off every one second. So that works. So now I control can control my scenes, and which handles my turning on my lamp in two different colors from my launch pad. But that's all basically my DMX3. So what about Virtual DJ? Well, if we go to Virtual DJ and go into settings, the first thing to do is to make sure that you set 
That's not that. Up here. You set the launch pad to ignore because that's controlling my DMX now. So you can't have that controlling virtual DJ. That'll actually just play at a lot of samples by default. That's not what we want. And then, more important part, probably, is this thing. The loop B would have appeared in here after I install. And I tell that to send MIDI clock output through that channel so that my DMX can pick it up. Then the final step over in my DMX again is to go into the scene once more, right click it, and say triggering. And then we say, well, triggering here is going to be BPM, and it's just going to be do one step uh, on BPM. I do that for both scenes. Do one step for BPM. So that means that the one second delay we saw before is no longer relevant. So when I now start music over in Virtual DJ, start a track. You can see over in my DMX, I'm getting the current BPM as input. It says 112, which is the same as it's saying over here, almost. So that's fine, but there's no light. Well, no, I haven't turned any of them on yet. So I go into I mode, which is already there, and I push one of the buttons. So now it's the red one. And it goes on and off. And it's in time with the BPM that it's getting from Virtual DJ. And I can do the same with the green. And back to the red. And then if I go back to Virtual DJ, which could of course have another controller attached to control this all this stuff, and I change the pitch. Like very slow, you can see that the light slows down. So that's actually the steps in the scene that changes slower because it's changing according to the BPM that it's receiving through Loopy from Virtual DJ. The same if I turn it all the way up. It follows the BPM. And if I change the color to another scene that has steps of green and nothing, that's the same thing. And finally, just turn it off and turn off the music. If you go back into my DMX and back into the settings, preferences, and MIDI, you could see down by the loopy internal uh, MIDI clock, you could adjust the BPM a little bit in each direction. So if you, no, the delay, sorry. So if you find that it's a little off, that it triggers too soon or too late, you can adjust that a little bit so that it, get, it's get, it gets better. So in conclusion, the integration between Virtual DJ and uh, my DMX is not really good because that's not what my, my DMX is all about, it's a pretty closed system, but you can still do a little bit because you can actually get it to receive the BPM from the software, from the virtual DJ software, and react upon it in its steps, for instance, like you saw in this demo.